if I could just get your attention just real quick before we, before we get started, I would be remiss in my responsibility if we did not take a moment to recognize the passing of Coach Don Byron, who was the boys' varsity basketball coach who passed away. So I'm just asking if we can just very briefly honor him and recognize him by a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I am Joanne Kamara Faust, and I'm chair of the Olive Rames High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee. I'd like to welcome everyone to our 2022 induction ceremony. And I just have to say, it is so wonderful to see so many familiar faces here tonight. It's been like old home week. It's been great. <laughs> um, as was the case with all things related to the pandemic, it forced us to postpone honoring these inductees two years ago. And I'm so glad that finally we are here to recognize these excuse me, deserving inductees tonight. This evening, we are pleased to introduce to the inducting eight outstanding individual athletes, two outstanding coaches, a state championship girls basketball team, and a deserving citizen. <clears throat> Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to recognize my fellow committee members who have all helped to make this evening possible. Please rise as I call your name. Gil Hino, our vice chair. Robert Clary, our secretary. Jason Sutton, our treasurer. Ed Lemish. Carrie McLaughlin Bourne. Steve Adams. Lainey Clement Holbrook. And I also want to mention Ross Moscato, who could not be here with us this evening. I would also like to introduce two new members to our OA community and to our committee. Our new principal, Kelly Cavanaugh, who joined us last year, and our new athletic director, Ryan Gordy, who joined us in June. I just want to ask people if you have a chance to visit up at the high school recently, I encourage you to check out our new interactive Hall of Fame virtual wall. Tonight's inductees profile should be up and viewing in a week or so after tonight. And to all the inductees this evening, congratulations and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Now, I would like to turn the floor over to fellow committee members and Hall of Famers, Gil Hino and Steve Adams, as they introduce our presenters for the evening. Thank you all for coming, and enjoy the evening. Yes. Evening. Just want to let you know I'm Gil Hino, and I'll be the co-host for the evening, along with Steve Adams. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the presenters, and then they will introduce the inductees. Um, I guess we'll get started. <laughs> Stevie, is that right? <laughs> Lady Clement Holbrook. She's a former Alpha Rames basketball coach and member of the committee. Good evening. Congratulations to all of you. What an extraordinary class of inductees. It's absolutely amazing. And I had a chance to see a lot of you, and it's like, oh, what just happened? The last time I saw you, you were like 17. I'm like, holy mackerel. 
It is my honor and privilege to introduce our first inductee for the evening, Lauren Batista, class of 2010. Lauren Batista, better known as LB, was a star athlete at all Marines. She was a three-year varsity member of the volleyball team in which she captained. But LB will be forever remembered, remembered for her outstanding accomplishments as a basketball player. LB was a four-year starter a captain as both a junior and a senior. With 1,667 points, she is the all-time leading scorer in the history of all Braves girls basketball. <laughs> she helped to lead the OA contingent to Hockamock titles in both 2009 and 2010. We finished 2010 as the Division II state champions. LB was chosen as the Gatorade Player of the Year. She was four-time Hockamock League All-Star, four-time Brockton Enterprise All-Scholastic, Boston Globe and Boston Herald Dream Teams, McDonald's All-American nominee, the NBCA Scholar Athlete, as well as the Hockamock League Female Scholar Athlete Award recipient representing all Rings High School. I know Andrew is very happy about that award. <laughs> LB went on to play at Bentley University and in 2014 won a national championship and was chosen as a WBCA Division II Player of the Year and an NCAA Academic All-American. And I know I left a few things out, but to me, there is something even more special about LB, and that is who she is as a person. Lauren is one of the most unselfish players that I've had the privilege to coach. Her leadership helped bring the 2000 state champions to a different level. She would always put herself in a position to make the people around her better because of her personality, her determination, and her willingness to do whatever it took to win. LB had the rare ability to anticipate what would happen next. And because of that, she helped make the people around her better and helped raise them to a level that developed confidence and grit. And the best part of all of this is she would never want to take shout outs for that. To watch her work ethic during the off season as well as in season, you would never see her give anything less than her best. She always had a plan. On the day before the state finals, the MIA hosted a luncheon for the captains and the coaches of the teams playing the state finals on the following day. What this meant was that LB, Lauren Vadalaro and I would be seated at the same table as the Millbury captains who we would be playing against for the title. Unbeknownst to me, LB decided to wear a particular pair of shoes to that event. Now, LB's a pretty tall person, but the shoes she chose was an absolute brilliant idea. She walked into the luncheon with high heels that made her tower over the two Millbury players as she set the stage. <laughs> The horrified look on those two girls' faces was priceless as it carried over into the game the following day, with OA beating Milbury for the state championship by a score of 50 to 31. Simply brilliant. There are many funny stories I could tell you, because on top of all this, she has a really good sense of humor and is a bit of a prankster. But I'm going to keep those moments to myself, although my team is quite aware of all of that. One of my proudest moments regarding Lauren is that she carried on her love of basketball by becoming a basketball coach herself. She was a grad assistant at BC and worked with the women's basketball team while going to school. Her next adventure was an internship with the NCAA in Indianapolis. Her responsibility was to help plan the NCAA Women's Final Four in all three divisions. All three national championship games were held in Indy, which to this day is the only time that that has happened. I had the pleasure of attending all three games, and I knew that LB had been a part, and all three were successfully completed. She would then move on to become an assistant coach at Tufts with Carla Berube, who was a national champion who played at UConn. LB is now the first assistant to Berube at Princeton, who finished the 21-22 season at 25-1 and beat Kentucky, the sixth seed, 
and then lost by one point to the third seed Indiana. I am so very proud of her, and I'm looking forward to seeing her continue to make an impact on those playing the game that we both so love. It is with great pleasure that I present to you for induction into the All Rams Athletic Hall of Fame, Lauren L.B. Batista. As you can see, she wore the same shoes. <laughs> Only for special occasions. Thank you, Lainey, for that awesome introduction. Uh, for someone who never wanted me to get too big for my britches, you really hyped me up there. I'll try not to let it get to my head. It's an honor to be here tonight to accept this induction into the Oliver Ames High School Athletic Hall of Fame and to celebrate the accomplishments of such a talented group of inductees. I would like to take a moment to thank the Hall of Fame committee members for selecting me for induction and for hosting such a wonderful event. A special shout out to Carrie Bourne, who had been communicating with us and doing so much work behind the scenes to make sure everything tonight was perfectly executed. Feels like just yesterday that I was a student at OA, but after turning 30 last week, getting married last month, and now being inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight, life is continuing to, rem to remind me that I'm in fact getting old. <laughs> However, so much of who I am and, and what I have become is attributed to my experience here, growing up as an athlete in the town of Easton and attending Oliver Ames High School. I would like to start by thanking my family. My older brothers, Matt and Mike, helped me discover my interest and love for basketball early on as I tagged along to all of their practices and games. My parents, who are here with me tonight, have been my number one fans since the very first day I picked up a ball. I can't remember a game without them there in the stands. They helped build my earliest understanding of self-worth and self-confidence, and for that I could not be more grateful. There's nothing more powerful than a young girl who believes she can do anything, and you continue to support me as I chase my dreams through this amazing sport. I would also like to thank the very first dynasty I was ever a part of, and that's Steve Bliss's travel basketball squad. <laughs> Our grade was the very first fourth grade girls basketball team in the town of Easton, but we proved early on that we were a force to be reckoned with. When it was all said and done, we compiled a near perfect record of 178 and 10 from fourth to eighth grade. And during that time, I gained my passion for the game, my competitive drive, and the understanding that team success is way more fun and way more important than individual success. Thank you, Steve for being such an important part of my basketball journey through so many travel and AAU seasons and for the time, effort, and sacrifice you made to give us opportunities to compete. And to my teammates that were a part of that entire journey, Lauren, Jackie, Sarah, Tessa, and Taylor, who's not here tonight, and to my high school teammates who are here tonight, thank you for simply letting me be me and for inspiring me to be better so that we could be better. I'm still so grateful for your friendship after all these years, and I'm so honored that I have the opportunity to share this moment with you guys tonight. Lainey, I could not have asked for a better coach, mentor, teacher, and friend to guide me during such a formative time in my life. I thank my lucky stars every day that I grew up in this town and I had a chance to be a part of your program. While your success on the court speaks for itself, it is the genuine care and relationships that you build with your players that makes you legendary. I'm so grateful for our friendship, which has continued to grow stronger since I left OA, and for inspiring me to pursue my own professional journey as a basketball coach. It's truly the best job in the world, and I learn from the very best. I also want to thank all my coaches and trainers during my four years at OA on the basketball and volleyball teams, and also at Evolution, Shout out, Evolution Sports Performance, for helping me grow as a person, a leader, and as an athlete. Several of you are here tonight, and it is so great to be back together again after all these years. And lastly, I would like to thank my husband, Andrew. As Lainey alluded to, it was through my success and accomplishments here at OA that allowed our paths to cross at the NBCA Awards Banquet during our senior year of high school. You never quite know how and when that perfect person will enter your life, 
but I will always be grateful for that day and everything leading up to that day because it led me to my soulmate. And while this thank you isn't necessarily for helping me achieve this induction tonight, it's for making me a better person every day since the day that we met. I wouldn't be the person I am today without you by my side. And I guess I also need to send a thank you note to the NBCA for selecting me for that <laughs> award. <laughs> I'll leave you with that quick little love story, but I'll be back later on uh, to celebrate my incredible team. Congratulations to all the other inductees tonight, and thank you again for this honor. Go Tigers! Good town like Easton can produce, you know, people like LB and, and the other inductees tonight. It, it, every, every one of these banquets blows my mind. It's incredible. And yeah, uh, Lauren, it was real hard for us to come up, you know, for you to, to be inducted. It was <laughs> one of the toughest decisions we've ever made. Um, so the next... Uh, presenter is Jen Byron. Come on up, Jen. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. Not quite as tall as I hope. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I would like to start by congratulating all of the Athletic Hall of Fame inductees. I am so proud and honored to introduce my brother, Mike Byron. I consider myself very fortunate to have been alongside Mike throughout his basketball career. The journey from our days of playing one-on-one -on -one in the driveway to his success as a high school and college athlete has been an exciting one. I have always looked up to my brother. During our travel basketball days, I copied whichever number Mike chose for his own jersey because I thought that if I had the same number as him, I would play like him. When Mike was on the varsity team, I remember the excitement of riding home on the school bus from my basketball games to go watch him play. Standing up here today, I admire my brother just as much. Our dad coached Mike through AAU, and together they won a handful of state championships and qualified for the national tournament eight straight years. These trips soon became our annual family vacation, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Mike was a very accomplished high school player. He was a three-year starter, a captain, and a member of the 1,000 Point Club. He was recognized as a Hockamock League All-Star, NBCA Player of the Year in the South, and Boston Herald and Brockton Enterprise All-Scholastic, amongst many other awards. He went on to play for the nationally ranked basketball program at WPI. I could go on and on about Mike's successes and achievements on the court, but I'd like to take this time to focus on his values that have allowed him to compete at a high level and have made him such a great leader and teammate. I know a few people who have a work ethic quite like Mike's. He has always been one to acknowledge that what you put into something will dictate what you will get out of it. I would attribute much of his success to the time and effort he put into improving his game, both in season and off season. Mike and his teammates always embrace challenges. During his sophomore season, they had several comeback wins and won a few games that came down to the final minutes, starting the season 13-0 and shocking the Hockamock League. They were determined to bring home a league championship banner, and with hard work and perseverance, they were able to do that. Mike demonstrated leadership on and off the court. As a captain, he encouraged his teammates and contributed to the gritty identity of the team. He could always be relied on to put the team first. As a player, Mike was a playmaker with a great sense of the game who could finish around the basket with contact while also knocking down outside shots. He always displayed composure during close games, hitting clutch shots to win at the buzzer against Franklin and Mansfield. He had a well-rounded game because he always believed in working on every aspect of the game. Mike's passion for the game of basketball is unrivaled. I know his wife Denise can attest to the fact that there is a basketball game on the television at their house nearly 
Mike and our dad went to the Final Four together for many years, and they enjoyed sharing their passion with others at the Anguilla basketball camp each summer. Mike plays several nights a week in adult leagues, and he has continued to contribute to the OA basketball program through coaching. He was an assistant coach to our dad during the 2020 to 2021 season, and together they led the team to the Hockamock League Championship. I'm so proud of you, Mike, for continuing dad's legacy, and I know dad is just as proud of you today as he always was. Mike has always been so supportive of my basketball career. As a player, he always believed in me and consistently encouraged me to look for my shot more. Later on, he invited me to join his team in a co-ed basketball league. Two Byrons on the court was sometimes a lot of competitiveness for a recreational basketball league, but we always had fun together. Now, as the JV girls coach, I can count on him and seeing him in the stands. I look up to my brother just as much today as I did when I was younger, if not more. Beyond his poise on the basketball court, Mike is the ultimate role model. He is kind, humble, and always has a positive impact on those around him. I couldn't ask for better footsteps to follow. Congratulations, Mike, on an incredible basketball career. Mom and I are so proud of you, and I can't think of anyone more deserving of this honor. Thank you. I present to you for induction into the Oliver Ames Athletic Hall of Fame, Mike Byron. Thank you, Jen your kind words and for taking the time to introduce me this evening. First off, I would like to congratulate the other recipients tonight. It's a special honor to share this recognition with all of you, and you should all be extremely proud of what you've accomplished. Thank you to the committee and to all those who made tonight possible, and to the many people here uh, who have influenced and supported me over the years. I'd like to thank my coaches at every level in all my sports from youth leagues up through high school, college, and beyond. To my teammates and friends who supported me and helped me become a better athlete and a better person each and every day. One of those friends is actually here tonight getting uh, recognized as well, and that's Mike Moverman. Congrats, Mike. Um, as some of you know, I ran cross country for a few years in high school. <laughs> and while I don't have any great individual accolades to show for it, um, I was able to do one thing for the program, and that was to convince Mike to quit football and to join cross country. <laughs> and after witnessing the career Mike had, I know Mike, Neil, Judy are certainly still thanking me to this day. <laughs> The next people I'd like to thank are my family. My sister, who is here with her team tonight being recognized as well. Congrats, Jen. Thank you for pushing me each and every day and for cheering me on at so many of my games. I couldn't ask for a better sibling to grow up with both on and off the court. To my mom for driving me to countless practices and coming to watch what probably seemed like thousands of games over the years always being someone I could count on and depend on in any situation. Thank you for supporting and encouraging me each and every day. To my wife, Denise. Although she's never got to watch me play a high school game, she's had the luxury to watch many of my adult basketball league games over the years. <laughs> and although there may be two people in the crowd, you can always count on Denise to be up, cheering, clapping, jumping up and down as if we were competing for a Hockamock championship. <laughs> Your enthusiasm and support for me in every aspect of my life is amazing, and I couldn't appreciate it more. To my dad. He's not here with us tonight, but I'd still like to take a moment and recognize his impact. From the very beginning, my dad has always been my biggest mentor. He had a way of motivating and inspiring me to be a better player and a better person. And he's a big reason why I'm standing up here today. I could always go to him for advice. I can count on him to drop everything at any moment 
and be there for me at any stage of my life. Our trips to the NCAA Final Four and the Anguilla basketball camp are memories that will stick with me forever. I truly can't thank him enough for everything he's done for me, for our family, and I couldn't be prouder to be his son. A little bit about what the game of basketball has meant to me. So of course, it's always been my passion and my outlet in many ways. It taught me the importance of setting goals, working towards those goals, both athletically and academically, and into my personal life and professional life. It's taught me what it means to compete, to persevere, and to challenge myself to be the best I can be. It showed me what it means to be a good teammate, to lead, to support, and to grow the people around you. And at the end of the day, like Jen said, you get out what you put in. And to all the inductees tonight, I can say with confidence, none of us would be here without the dedication and commitment that we put into each one of our programs. Then there are the memories. So playing travel basketball alongside my classmates and close friends throughout middle school, the AAU weekends, the state championships, the national tournament trips, the high school pasta dinners, the team sleepovers, the buzzer beaters, the championships, and going to battle every day with a group of great friends. The relationships I was able to form because of the game of basketball are incredible. And I'm sure many of you feel the same way, but there are so many lifelong friendships that I've gained through athletics and through high school sports that I'm beyond grateful to have. The support from this town and this school the teachers, the coaches, school administrators has been incredible. I moved back to Easton a couple of years ago, which gave me the opportunity to give back to a community that I'm so proud of. That opportunity was coaching at OA. The first year working alongside my dad will always be my fondest memory. Being able to learn from one of the best and being able to help a great group of kids overachieve and come away with a league championship was something truly special. It's a remarkable feeling being able to teach and help student athletes reach their goals, put them in positions to succeed, and I'm grateful to be able to continue to provide them with the same opportunities that I was fortunate enough to have throughout my playing career here at OA. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone again for this tremendous honor and recognition. Appreciate it. Thank you. Like to introduce Neil. Where is he? <laughs> Neil Levine. He was a former cross country coach. <laughs> Mike's a little taller than me. So. First time I laid my eyes on Jenna Davidner. She was in seventh grade running the Moscato Mile. It's about halfway into the race. And she comes by me in first place by about 400 yards. No one is around her. And she's floating like a gazelle. <laughs> and I'm standing on the track and she comes by me and her head turns and she's looking around to see if anyone's close to her and I'll never forget the look in her eye it said no one is ever going to beat me <laughs> I think she set a record that day it's very hard for me to remember because she was always setting records. So after the race, I walk over to her, approach her, try to plant the seeds in a couple of years that she would be running cross country. And I got the same look. <laughs> Only this time it said, 
Get away from me. I play soccer. I want nothing to do with you. Eighth grade, same story, blows away the competition. I go to after I get the same look, same story. Figure out, all hope is lost. Until two days into her freshman season, she saw the light, made the switch, and as they say, the rest is history. So what is history? There's a program in front of you with so many accolades it would take me 15, 20 minutes just to read them all, but I'll just give you a few. History, history is a boatload of first place finishes. History is countless course records. History is being undefeated in every dual meet she ever ran in. History is setting the school record in the 5K. History is going on to compete at Georgetown, the number one school in the nation, NCAA national championship team. That's where she competed. So you couple Jenna's cross-country history with her amazing track record, and I could easily make the case that Jenna Davener was the most talented distance runner ever to compete at Oliver Ames High School. I'm not done, Jenna. <laughs> but what history does not tell you are the sacrifices that Jenna made for not only her own success, and there were many, but more importantly, the sacrifices Jenna made for the success of her teammates and the program. You see, Jenna was pretty much guaranteed a win in every race she ran. I could give you countless examples of Jenna sacrificing her own personal glory to run with her teammates, pacing them, making them stronger, faster, and ultimately champions. She was as much as a coach of this program on that team as Judy and I were and Kyle were. Who knows how many more records she could have broken, how much faster she could have run, or how many more scholarship offers she could have received if she let it rip. Although she didn't do too bad at Georgetown. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you one of my great friends, and as I present to you for induction into the All Rams Athletic Hall of Fame, Jenna Davinger. Okay, I am gonna be very boring compared to what Neil just said. Um, so I'll just start by thanking the Hall of Fame committee for all of your hard work and for putting together such a special event for all of us. I also have to thank my family because of course, it's so much easier to find success when you have people at home that support and believe in you. I am so lucky to have the best parents, brothers, aunts and Nana who always came to so many of my races and always had my back. And last but not least, my coaches, Neil, Judy, and Kyle, who made me into the athlete I was. I won the coaching lottery with them and I really don't have the words to thank them properly, but I can try. As you can tell with Neil's speech right there, we, we, were, we had such a close relationship and I really was the luckiest athlete and I think anyone that ran cross country for each of those three coaches would say the exact same thing. I am so grateful for everything you all did for me and just thank you so much. Running cross country and track at OA was such a blessing for me because I got to have the best coaches and the best teammates, including a few that are here tonight, Mike Moverman, Brian, Jake, and of course, I have to shout out Julie Binney, who was my partner in crime. And to top it off, I got to do all of this with my cousins, Michelle and Chelsea. They're two of my most favorite people in the world. And when you compete in a sport as grueling as cross country or track, it helps have people by your side that you would consider your sisters. 
they made every memory infinitely more special for me. And it's the one thing I remember the most about my time at All Brains. Thank you again and congratulations to my fellow inductees. This is such a talented group of people and I couldn't be more honored to celebrate it with you guys. All right, next, the presenter is, again, Neil Levine, and this is sponsored by Honey Hots. Dr. Michael Moverman. I like to say that because I consider Michael like a son. And all German Jewish parents like to say doctor when they talk about this. Inside joke for us. Dr. Michael Moverman. Integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance. You understand it? And you live it. But if there is one more value I would add to use to describe you, it would be humility. However, it wasn't always the case. <laughs> Long before Michael set the 5K record at Duke, ran at the high school national championship, was a high school state champion, Michael was a freshman at OA running cross country. As a complete surprise to Judy and I, he opened the season running number seven for us and quickly climbed the depth charts. Now that's no easy task for a freshman on a very talented team. Late in the season, we had a large invitational meet where there was amazing competition, but no team scoring. There were freshman races, sophomore races, and a combined junior-senior race. Now in those races, athletes can race up a class, but they can't race down. So we were faced with the decision, do we run Michael in the junior-senior race, where based on our predictions, he would have finished probably in the top 20, or do we race him in the freshman race against his peers, where we knew if he followed our race strategy, he would win? <laughs> so we went for the win. The race strategy was to go out easy, hang off the leader's shoulder, and with 400 meters left in the race, take the lead and kick it in. Gun goes off, I'm watching the race, I'm standing at 400 meters, and Mike comes by me with a 200 meter lead. He turns to me, <laughs> gives me a big smile, gives me a thumbs up, and says, I got this coach. <laughs> the only problem was, I wasn't 400 meters from the finish, I was 400 meters from the start. <laughs> 10 minutes later, when I was 400 meters from the finish, Mike comes by me in third place, fading fast and not looking good. <laughs> Lesson learned. Let's fast forward three years. We're at Stonehill College. It's our annual cross-country banquet. 130 student athletes, their parents, coaches, invited guests, probably 350 people in the room, places packed. Standing before us, dressed in the same suit that I am wearing tonight, which Michael had borrowed from me, was junior captain Michael Moverman. Now Michael was giving the traditional captain speech to the team. Now I mentioned the borrowed suit for two reasons. One, that was many years ago, and the suit still fits me and Michael. <laughs> the 
But more importantly, two days before the banquet, Michael's house had caught fire, and all his clothes had been destroyed. I'll never, ever forget the speech that Mike gave that night on the heels of such a tragedy. It was Hanukkah, the festival of lights, and Mike's speech was a gift of light and a beacon to us all. It was filled with grace, gratitude, and humility. It showcased the greatest qualities of the man he had become, far exceeding any of his athletic accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you my good friend for induction into the Oliver Ames Athletic Hall of Fame, Dr. Michael Moldman. experience as part of the Olive Rams cross country and track teams has meant to me and how much of an impact it's had on my life. To put it simply, running for OA was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I feel incredibly lucky to be standing here tonight with many of the people that helped shape my experience in the room. I was truly at the right place at the right time and with the right people while in high school. I'd first like to take some time to thank a few people. I'd first like to thank my parents, Iman Abba. You two were so ingrained in my running life that I sometimes think that you were a part of the team. In fact, in my mind, you were. Without you two, none of this would have been possible. I owe so much to you. Having you as my parents is a gift that I'll never be able to truly repay. I'm the luckiest person in the world to have you two as my parents. We had fun together, and I'm so happy that I was able to share all these special mo uh, I was able to share all these special memories from my running career with you two. I'd now like, next like to thank my brother Daniel and my sister Sharon. As many of you know, running became a family affair for the Movermans. It was amazing to be on the team for most of my career with Sharon, who was just one grade below me. And the year after Sharon graduated, Daniel joined the team. For better or worse, OA got about 10 straight years of Movermans. <laughs> Despite our similarities, I loved how each of us were a bit different. I always will look up to Sharon's beautiful, happy personality and toughness. I'll also always look up to Daniel's fearlessness and independence. I'll always remember watching Daniel take the lead at doing New England Championships in the two mile in high school my, his senior year, and I was proud of the way he raced. I really look up to the both of you, and I'm lucky to call you both my siblings. I would next like to thank two of my coaches, Neil and Judy. I could talk all night about the two of you, but to keep it brief, you two are clearly the best two leaders that I have ever worked with in any aspect of my life. You two changed my life, and I'm indebted to you forever. Your success as coaches was no accident, and was largely due to the culture you created on the team. You first and foremost taught values, integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance, which were then applied to coach cross country. You treated everyone the same, whether they were first or last on the team. You're not only responsible for much of my success in running, but for helping me realize who I truly was. What better gift? Um, what, what gift could be greater than this? So again, thank you so much. Next, I'd like to thank my teammates. Tonight, I'm lucky enough to have uh, two of my best friends and teammates here, Jake Marcus and Brian Cohen. It was amazing what running had done for us. I spent more time with you two than anyone else during my, during my high school career. The conversations, the jokes, the quiet runs through Borderland, the long runs at Blue Hills, the summer planning in Jake's basement. You made running fun, and I owe a huge amount of my success to you, too. I'll always cherish these memories and moments forever. Most importantly, I'm thankful for how running brought us together and has allowed us to be such good friends. And speaking of teammates, I'd like to thank one of my other teammates, who's also here tonight, Mike Byron, who also uh, mentioned the story I'm about to tell you right now. Many of you may not know this, but it was actually Mike who convinced me back in ninth grade to join the cross-country team. So in many ways, I owe all of this to you. <laughs> 
And since he brought this story, I'll take a little offshoot right here and, and, and tell it quickly. But I remember he called me. I was outside my backyard, and he said, "Hey, I'm joining. I think I'm gonna join the cross country team. You should, you should think about it. Brooks is doing it. Logan's doing it. All, two of my other good friends." So I told my mom right after I got off the phone. I said, "I think I'm gonna join cross country." And Ima goes, and Ima goes, "What is that studio? Which is garbage in Hebrew." <laughs> So it worked out pretty well. <laughs> I'd also like to thank uh, all the parents, administrators, athletic directors, bus drivers, and other coaches, including those who are here today, Coach, D uh, Coach Sunderland, Sousa, and some of the other coaches, Coach Darling and Atwood, to help support the team during my time at Oliver Ames. Lastly, I'd like to thank my wife, Christine. While you're not able to see me run competitively much, I'm so happy that you're, uh, that you're here today with me. And despite all the values that Neil and Judy taught me along the way through running, I'm sure you'd argue that I still have much more to learn. <laughs> Specifically in the form of learning to pull them, put away my clothes and dishes. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I know I keep saying this, but I'm consistently so impressed with your character and sense of what's right and wrong. You make me a better person every day. I love you. I'll end with a quick story that I don't think many of you have heard before. When I was born, I unfortunately was found to have a birth defect where one of my legs was twisted in the wrong direction. My parents brought me to an orthopedic surgeon when I was an infant for treatment. During the visit, Abba, my dad, asked the doctor what, if he thought this would have any long-lasting impact on my life. The doctor responded, it shouldn't cause any problems unless he becomes an Olympic distance runner. <laughs> it's funny how things work out in life sometimes. I didn't quite make the Olympics, but I think, th I think things worked out just fine. So, thank you very much. Still soccer coach? Uh, either one, doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> I'm also not as tall as Lauren, so <laughs> all right. Um, but I am all Lauren. You said all, but I kept freaking out because I'm, I'm putting on my reading glasses now. <laughs> because I have, I turned 44 and I can't read anymore. I'm just kidding, I'm fine, I can read. So, um, <laughs> let's have a little bit of fun. Um, so good evening everyone, and uh, congratulations to all of the uh, Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, it is quite the honor. Uh, what, a, what a tremendous, tremendous gift you've been to the community. Uh, I've firsthand been able to see many of you um, compete and actually uh, participate in your sport, you know, from afar as, as a coach. And I'll say you have been a, a pillar of strength still for the OA community. In all the athletics, you've set the bar very high, and uh, we still try to keep that bar going. Um, so thank you very much for what you've done, and it kind of helps set a nice standard here at, at OA. Uh, I'm currently in my fourth year, 14th year uh, at Olive Rames here for the, the men's soccer program, and I've had the great privilege of, of coaching many, many great student-athletes. I mean, uh, terrific student-athletes, All-Americans, three All-Americans, several people have gone to Division I schools, um, players that have just been absolutely incredible, to be fair. I've been very blessed. Um, but undoubtedly, one of the best, if not the best, students I've ever had a chance to coach and work with. Um, is, is David Peretti. Okay, so David Peretti, I call him Dave, I call him Peretti, I call him David, so you'll hear all three throughout the speech, so please, it's the same one person, it's not the Holy Trinity, close enough. It is close enough, just so we're clear, it's close enough. Um, but I, I'll say that I've been able to induct my father into a Hall of Fame uh, in Connecticut, I've been able to induct and provide a speech for a friend of mine at the Eastern Massachusetts Soccer Coaches Hall of Fame, um, but when David asked me to induct him into the Hall of Fame for, for all of Reigns. Um, it's a really awesome and humbling feeling. Um, there's a big world out there, and for him to think of me, uh, to induct him for his Hall of Fame, um, for primarily baseball, was awesome. I don't even know what baseball is, right? <laughs> but he asked me, and I'm just kidding, I do, it's a sport. But, but when he asked me to do it, I was, I was 
I was honored and horrified at the same time because I don't know what else to say about baseball. Um, so I'm gonna say nothing about baseball. I'm gonna let you all know that he was amazing. If you wanna just ask stats, his, his stats include being a, a captain, include being a leader, include winning championships, include being individual honors. He's, he still holds career, uh, first in careers at, at Union College. He's gone on to do amazing things um, with, the game, with the sport he loves. I can talk to you about how awesome he was for me at soccer. So for soccer, he was a, a captain, a leader. I had one year with David as, as a player only. Unfortunately, it was my first year. Um, and I can count on David for 100% all the time. I mean, David Peretti was my go-to guy. I needed someone play in the back, he played in the back. I needed someone to run up front, he ran up front. I needed someone to play in goal, he jumped in goal. He was terrible, but he jumped in goal. Like, he would do whatever we needed, he did. It was unreal. Um, David has a great character. He is a, a person that was a, a hockey mark all-star. He was a person who buried Canton for the first time, like 40 games when I first took over. He scored two goals against Canton in seven minutes. Um, and, and we actually knocked out the Canton team at that time who had won 40 games or a dynasty. So there's these moments that I have that I share with David, but you would never know he did any of that because he wouldn't tell anyone. He wouldn't, it's, to him it didn't matter. To him he was part of the team and, and the team always came first. And, and for me, um, to know him has been incredible because I've seen him grow and yet he never talks about himself. He never, I mean, I believe his mom would probably even say, you know what, you're all right, kid, you're not bad, you know? <laughs> right? I believe that you would push him, right? Come on, help me out. I, I believe she would push him enough to keep him going, right? Even though he was super successful, she always wanted and, and then they had that, that, that family connection. So for me, um, he is super accomplished in all his sports he's been a part of, but for me, his motivation, his discipline, his attitude, his championship mentality are the three pillars we've still built our Olive Reigns program on since he left in 2009, right? So we believe in excellence, we believe in family, we believe in being relentless. All three of those pillars define uh, David Peretti, all right? And for me, to end it, I'll just say, I have a daughter and I have a son, um, and, and my wife are always very grateful and prayerful that we'll, they'll meet good friends, good teammates, good coaches, good mentors, um, very much like David, right? I know that if they do, that they're gonna have a very, very positive influence in their lives and they'll be better people for knowing David. So it is without further ado, without further delay, it is my great honor to present to you for induction into the Olive Rams Athletic Hall of Fame, Mr. David Peretti. Wow, John, you're all right too. Um, but seriously, thank you uh, so much for the introduction. And uh, you've been an incredible mentor in my life um, and a great friend after all these years. Um, I can't tell you how many times when I'm rallying the troops on the baseball field, which once again, John knows nothing about, but I unknowingly <laughs> spewed out John Barada quotes. So, but they always were effective and uh, they were always well received. Um, congrats to my fellow inductees. Um, you all were, you know, titans of, of uh, Oliver Ames High School. So, you know, it's, it's an honor to be here with you guys. And uh, specifically the um, girls, I wanna shout out the girls uh, basketball team. That was like years in the making. Um, you know, like they were, they were incredible and uh, I'm just so happy that you guys ended with a, with a championship. That's unbelievable. Um, and thank you so much to the Hall of Fame committee um, for following my, <laughs> my collegiate career. Um, and Joanne Faust, thank you so much. Um, there's not many, too many times in life where you can get the opportunity to publicly thank your parents, and uh, so I'm going to jump right on that right now. Um, you know, you, you've been, the love and support you've shown throughout my playing career, and just in general, is, is unbelievable. Uh, driving to school, practices, making sure I did my homework, but mostly all the sacrifices that you have made throughout our lives uh, truly doesn't go unnoticed. I remember one summer when I was playing bas uh, baseball, not basketball, trust me, not basketball. Um, I was playing baseball in Nashua, New Hampshire in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League and I got invited to try out for the Atlanta Braves. My dad drove from Easton to Nashua to pick me up. He, we then drove down to the Bronx, had the tryout. 
We drove back to Nashua for a playoff game, and then he stayed to watch the game, and then he drove back to Easton. And then my mom, uh, no one could ever forget spaghetti dinners, I think, in this room in general. But at the Peretti household, the meatballs were unbelievable. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's these efforts, efforts that um, you take for granted as a kid, but when you grow older, you realize these are superhero-like qualities. So thank you for everything you do. And I want to give a quick shout out to my sisters, Francesca and Dina, uh, for being incredible role models growing up. The passion for sports helped drive mine. I got to be the ball boy at the varsity soccer games at a really young age and, and observe what it's like to play on a varsity team. Karima, thank you uh, so much. You didn't really know me in high school, and that's okay, but you did fulfill the female requirement for our co-ed uh, softball team last week, and that is awesome. I love you. Can't wait to marry you. <laughs> As far as Easton and Olive Rains High School, the education, athletics, school pride, music department, everything was truly top notch. I mean, seriously, every sport, club, musical, show choir performance was always done with such professionalism and passion. It was truly a great thing to be a part of and gave me an enormous sense of pride. One spring term, I can remember I was out in San Diego playing electric bass in the pit band for, at a uh, show choir competition. And the next day I was playing again at Frothingham Park behind the plate uh, against Mansfield. You know, who gets to do that as a 17, 18 year old kid? Growing up in a place like Easton was awesome. We lived over on Seaver Street and within the neighborhood we had enough kids to play um, competitive games of baseball, basketball, hockey, football, everything. And we eventually earned the name Seaver Street Athletic Club by Bill Mowat, who is an OA super fan. Uh, some of you may know. Um, <laughs> As we grew, kids from our other neighborhoods filtered in, on into Carlson Field and the level of competition grew. And we pushed ourselves every day until our moms called us home, or the lights went out. And a few of us may have lost our teeth playing kill the man with the ball. <laughs> Me. The love and support from the town is unmatched in my, uh, unmatched in my opinion. Whenever there, was, whenever there was a playoff game, the community showed up. And one of my favorite memories was my last game at Frothingham Park. It was the beginning of the MIA tournament and right before we started the game, I looked out into the stands at a sea of people from home plate all the way down the left field line. And I just couldn't believe how many people would show up for a ball game. It's a memory I'll never forget. While I found most of my individual success in college, I could not have done that without the foundation that was built here at Oliver Ames High School. I was taught resilience, how to lead, and how to leave it all on the field. Every quality I brought to the next level was learned or taught to me by amazing coaches, Teaches, teachers, and administrative staff here at OA. My favorite part about my journey is the people I've met and the relationships forged along the way. Watching everyone succeed in the workforce and growing their families brings me so much joy. Thank you so much for this honor, and I am truly thankful to have grown up in a town like this and graduated from Olive Rains. Next up, um, I'm seeing a, it's, a, it's an incredible thing uh, where these coaches, we're seeing some serious talent in the coaching staff too here because they're presenting. Uh, so how about a little hand for the coaches that are introducing these kids. We're lucky to have them as well. So the next presenter uh, will be another excellent uh, track coach, Jake Sunderland. I was honored when Quinn Ryder contacted me and asked him to introduce him into the Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, Quinn's resume is absolutely, absolutely outstanding. Um, and when he came to us, his freshman year. Uh, he was already an accomplished multi-sport athlete with a, a promising career in football and wrestling, and he joined the track team. And his first 
decision was he was going to be the next great OA distance runner. Um, so he spent, yeah, so he spent three weeks training with the distance team. And then he went into the first meet and he went out and ran the mile and he ran a very respectable, um, you know, good, promising mile time. Uh, Quinn was, like I said, always competitive. So later in the season, he joined the long jump team, started doing long jump. And in our second to last meet of the year, he had jumped like mid 15, low 16 feet long jumps. Um, in our second to last meet of the year, he said, what do I have to do, coach, to uh, qualify for the varsity team, to be in the top three? He said, well, our third jumper's 16, 10 right now. Might be a little bit of a stretch, but go ahead and give it a shot. He jumped 17 feet. <laughs> Goes to the last meet of the year and says, well, what do I have to do to make the Hawk Championship? He said, well, the cutoff's like 18 feet, but you've already had a big PR, so you're probably good. Goes and jumps 18-1. <laughs> At the Hawk Mock Championship meet, he said, what's the cutoff for states? He said, 18-10. He jumped 19-2. And then at states, he said to Coach Pamela, what do I have to do to be done for the season? <laughs> Coach Pamela said, well, if you jump 20 feet, that would be pretty impressive. So he jumped 20 feet um, and just missed the All-State meet that year. Um, I would like to take credit for all the great coaching that went into that, but really, we were just as surprised as anyone was that he kept doing this. We had no idea why this was happening. We were just happy to be along for the ride. His accomplishments in track and field are really too numerous to mention. The program is outstanding. Take a look at it. Um, in there, you'll, it talks about multiple um, Hawk Championship wins, multiple state titles, uh, multiple um, Enterprise All Scholastics, multiple uh, Boston Globe All Stars, a Hockamock League MVP. Um, also, the fact that basically, if you looked at our record board after Quinn Ryder graduated, the top half was all Andy Powell from the 800 up, and the bottom half from the 300 down was Quinn Ryder, and there were a few spots left for everybody else. Um, and I see nods because we have a, we have a bunch of track people here that, that remember that record board. Um, the, the one thing, I, I contacted Quinn when he had asked me to, to present him. Um, he said, yeah, I said, what, what stories am I not allowed to tell? Because there are a lot here. Um, and he said, basically, you can tell any story you want as long as you mention my rivalry with Kyle Stedman. And he said, specifically, I have, I have to have you mention that I beat him so many times it made him cry. So now I've officially done that. Um, for Kyle's part, he wanted Quinn to remember that he's six foot two and Quinn is still five six. So he feels like he won that overall. Uh, one of the coolest accomplishments that Quinn had was in the, at the end of his junior year, he was selected to run on a Massachusetts State All-Star team. Four by one relay, it was two boys and two girls, and they were running in the Puma Games, which was sponsored by Usain Bolt. Uh, Usain came to Boston, brought with him the Jamaican relay team. Um, the Massachusetts team ran and won against the Jamaican team, and when Quinn was talking to Usain Bolt, and they were kind of exchanging pleasantries, um, Usain said something about, you know, well, you know it, was, it was an impressive win, and you know, I hope you're happy with these. I'd be happy if I could race you. Um, so Quinn Ryder did actually race Usain Bolt. He came into my room the next day with the photo finish picture, um, which was just a picture of Usain Bolt pointing at the camera. <laughs> I said to Quinn, where are you in the picture? He's like, you'd need about six feet of tape in order to get to me at the finish line. Um, it was the only time in his career where he was no, nowhere in the, uh, the picture. Um, after graduating away, Quinn went on to UMass Amherst where he ran, ran for a nationally ranked team and set a number of records there before going on to, for two years at Queens University down in Virginia where he still holds a number of records for them um, and was an accomplished runner there as well. He currently lives in Japan, so unfortunately couldn't quite make the commute to be here. I think it's pretty poor of him. I think he didn't put enough effort on this. Um, he couldn't quite make the, the trip to be here. Um, but uh, accepting on his behalf is his father, Dave. Um, so I now present to you for indu induction into the All Rings Athletic Hall of Fame, Quinn Ryder. Coach Sunderland knows, uh, once again, Quinn passed the buck. He's not here. Um, that was a great, great, uh, great uh, list of accomplishments. But I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't really talk about everybody else here. You know, And I, I always think about the parents. You know, definitely the dads, especially the moms, you know, that were 
at three different soccer fields at the same time, at uh, at you know at so many events, you know cookies, bake sale. We missed that that pasta dinner thing, but, um, and it was uh, just such a wonderful thing because there are so many people, you know, and Quinn would would uh, want me to tell you that uh, that he was a part of it and uh, appreciate and he appreciates being a part of it, but he's only a part of it. It was so many other people, you know, so many coaches. Coach Pamela, Coach Darling, I think I saw him here. So many people played such a role in, in everything, you know. So it's not, you know, just him. He could not win a game himself or win a meet himself. It's uh, up to you. A um, few years back, or several years back, I should say, getting older, right? I haven't been in back to Easton probably in 15, 18 years, so. But it's nice to be back and see some familiar faces. Nobody got older. Perfect. Um, <laughs> But um, one person came to me uh, you know, a while back and said, I'm responsible totally for, uh, for Quinn's successes. And I said, well, who are you? Um, and that was Coach Neil Lehane. He basically said, I recognize right away, he, he ain't what we want. So he kicked him off the team. I think it was the first team he got kicked off of. So once again, once again, Coach, you, you were there. But he appreciates it. Um, so to all of you, uh, thank you so much. Maybe just give a round of applause to all of you who just put so much in with you, to the kids and family, um, to the Byrons and their, and their loss. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sad thing. We, uh, you know, we all struggled through COVID and so many other things, and uh, just so happy to see you here. And what, my, what, what accomplishments, all the, all the people that uh, we're celebrating today and, and certainly all their families. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, if I miss a name or two, I apologize. I mean, certainly the Hall of Fame committee and everybody else uh, that uh, sponsored it from, I think I saw the Easton uh, Town Council, Easton Town Committee in there as well. So uh, thank you all. Um, I think friends, family, other players, and for those of you who knew uh, Quinn, um, you know, he, he misses you and is still in touch with, you know, a lot of folks, you know, as well. Uh, so many thanks to just you know, all of you who, for all you put in. Um, I would be remiss, though, if I didn't thank one person. Um, and that person, you know, really um, was more than a coach. Uh, he was more than a mentor. Uh, and, uh, and he had a few exceptional you know, coaches, but... Uh, Coach Sunderland, uh, just I can't, you know, I can't say enough. You have, uh, you know, you helped mold, you know, my child, and uh, as we all know, it takes a village to educate a child, and uh, he's um, he's benefited so much from that, and certainly part of that started, you know, here. Um, I'm not going to be too long, but I think, um, you know, like many of the the kids in in Easton, they started. I have fond memories of the of the little league. Uh, and Quinn was a dedicated, hard worker, but he wasn't always that way. Uh, started off in baseball. He was a star, not really. Um, but when you get a free cheeseburger, if you hit a double, you know, at the snack bar, the kid was Babe Ruth, right? So, uh, so there were a lot of, uh, lot of uh, I think, successes, you know, that, that he grew up. He was, uh, he was a great running back in the football team, fast. Oh, no, he wasn't a running back. He was a five foot six defensive tackle. <laughs> I don't know. But once again, Coach Lehane, thank you for sending him in the right, uh, in the right direction. So um, just a quick note to, and I, and I apologize because I'm certainly not Quinn. Uh, I'm five seven. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, Quinn has been over in Tokyo for the past probably seven plus years. Went there after college and spoke about his, his uh, you know, career here and he was in all the wonderful associations. Went down to UMass. He wanted to be, you know, one of his goals to be a Division One runner and became the top sprinter there. Pretty good. Went down when the time was right and made a change down to uh, at Queens College and they ended up winning their uh, division down there. So there's some, some good accomplishments. He left for, uh, for Tokyo uh, and has... Uh, has done pretty well over there. He's in the international business sector over there. Uh, met a person over there, so probably not going to see him. 
Uh, did have an opportunity to go over there once uh, and uh, check it out. Uh, his partner, uh, her name is Monica, we're very proud of her. She, uh, uh, she's much smarter than he is. She, uh, <laughs> she uh, has more master's degrees than I can, I can count. She's in, she's in something that's called energy process, whatever that may be. May be. And um, she is, happens to be Japanese and Ukrainian and she stood up for the movement in Ukraine and they set up uh, the biggest movement in Japan. Um, and after I think it exceeded, you know, seven or, you know, or I don't know if it was eight, but seven, uh, seven zeros there, they had to incorporate over there. Uh, they were able to get her, uh, her mother out, who's Japanese, and her father it took longer. He was hiding up the Carpathian Mountains, but, um, but he's out as well. So, you know, God bless all of them. Um, Quinn, what's he been doing lately? He's, um, you know, we all were struck by COVID. Um, always bugged him, why don't you go get your master's? And uh, he did it like in six, seven months, you know, over there. So great accomplishment on his part. Uh, and he started working out, I guess, pretty seriously about a year and a half ago. And he is, uh, uh, started training again to run. So he is uh, gonna be running in the 60th Tokyo Games in uh, November of this year, he's gonna run the, the 100 and he's gonna do the long jump there as well. So it's great. But the, thank you. But the best part of him is, is all of you and, and, and so many other people you know, that made it. It is, it is a great tradition, you know, reminded how many, how many people and all the support they give here. It's just, it's awesome. So he always will, will treasure being a part of it. And that's what he was, a, a, a part, but you know, so I thank you for sharing my son, you know, Coach uh, Sunderland for uh, helping to uh, mentor him as well. And uh, I wish so many of all of you just the best of health and good luck. Thank you. Introduce the next presenter, Jenna Davenner. She looks familiar. Have I seen you before? Thank you. Have I seen you before? <laughs> Sorry in advance if I repeat a couple things. I didn't appreciate having to do two speeches, and so it might be a little repetitive. I also imagine in my head doing Michelle's first, and I so just bear with me. Um, hello, everyone, again. I want to start by thanking the Hall of Fame Committee for their efforts to honor the former athletes of all of our aims. Also, I'd like to thank everyone in the room for sharing this special event with us. Your support was present 10 plus years ago, and it continues today. And of course, congrats to all the inductees tonight. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our next Hall of Fame inductee. This athlete, better known to me as my cousin Michelle, competed on the OA track and field team. Michelle was a four-year varsity letter winner in both indoor and outdoor track. This is in addition to her four years as a varsity letter winner in soccer, where she won a state championship and earned her debut into the OA Hall of Fame. As of tonight, Michelle is now a two-sport inductee. And while this is extremely impressive, she actually isn't the first from our family to be inducted. Our pa, who was a basketball star at Oliver Ames, was inducted in 2003. Little would he know, his adorable blonde granddaughter would be the next one to carry on the family tradition. When I was in eighth grade and Michelle was a freshman, I had no idea what track was. All I knew was that my cousin was a star. I heard the stories she told about races, how nervous she would get and how sick they would make her feel. It scared me, but somehow she kept winning. She was incredible from the second she started track. Coach Darling and Coach Sunderland would have had her run every single sprint race that was allowed. Michelle used to rack up enough points to basically win meets by herself. I loved watching her run and I thank God that her and I didn't compete in the same events. <laughs> Michelle was clearly a star at 
a star athlete at all of her aims, and her talent was versatile. In track, she was our team's star sprinter year in and year out. Her bread and butter was the 400 meter where she holds the school record, but she could also high jump, long jump, and could be thrown into a four by eight relay with us distance girls on any day of the week. For an athlete, preparing and managing multiple events during practice and competition days is not an easy task, yet she was able to balance her responsibilities with determination and grace. Just ask her about the 10 days she practiced with the distance team her sophomore year. <laughs> As a record holder in multiple events, both indoor and outdoor, my cousin led our team to victory on many occasions. She was a top sprinter in the state. She was a Hockamock League MVP and just the best teammate you could ask for. Her leadership, athletic talents, and camaraderie will always be remembered. And for me, there was nothing better than having my cousin by my side. As I close this introduction, I would like to add that family plays a key role in the success of any athlete. And we certainly had that. Michelle and I both know how present our families were during our time at OA. And I can also say that Michelle reciprocated that support to me and her little sister, Chelsea. For us, it really was a family affair and Michelle's mom, AKA my Auntie Linda, couldn't have been a bigger part of that. We miss her so much, but I know that she is so proud of you for tonight's induction and for everything else you have accomplished in your life, which is a lot. Michelle Saroy Shouldice, it is my special honor to introduce you as an inductee to the Oliver Ames Hall of Fame for the class of 2009. I love you so much and congratulations. And I have to read this, so I present you for induction to the Oliver Hames <laughs> Athletic Hall of Fame. super prepared so of course like my phone died that had my speech on it but luckily I sent it to my sister so I'm reading it off a text message <laughs> okay. okay so I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for this nomination and I want to say congratulations to all the fellow athletes here tonight I initially started track to stay in shape for soccer little did I know it would shape me so much more than that at the time my family knew very little about track so much so my mom refused to come to meets until i won something <laughs> <laughs> meet after meet i would come home like okay all right i won this i won that and she'd be like okay well can you win like a big meet and i would say okay fine so finally like we went to the hawks and i was like can you please just come so she did come and she fell in love with it becoming one of the um leaders of the booster club <laughs> I would say track and sports in general is so much more than a sport itself. And you truly don't appreciate all it gives until you're washed up 32 with two kids trying to convince them that you're really cool. <laughs> I'm grateful for all the lessons learned that I use daily to make it through life. I wouldn't change a thing and I enjoyed every minute. Even if, it, even if I threatened to quit track at least once a week, my mom would roll her eyes and say, just suck it up. So kind of funny story. My daughter is in preschool, and she came home from school in June with the Track Star Award. It made me laugh out loud. For one, she is not athletic at all. <laughs> and when I told her I got a similar award, she literally just said, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it, it, it actually made me laugh, because I think about being back in high school and how amazing it is, right, to be part of a sport, and I really hope for that for her someday. It's so special to be part of a team, and they kind of become a second family. I definitely need to thank my family because they've always been my biggest cheerleaders. I want to thank my sister and Jenna, being there to hate whoever I needed them to hate on the opposing <laughs> team, <laughs> or just to be there to rub my back when my head was halfway in a barrel after a race. I need to thank my husband, Billy, for sitting in the stands for hours at Reggie Lewis for Nationals when we came in dead last. <laughs> <laughs> 
I need to thank all my coaches who put up with me in my highs and lows for eight long seasons. And finally, I need to thank my mom because if I don't, I know she will definitely strike me down somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done without her support. I mean, once she finally got on board. But she wasn't just my biggest supporter. She supported every single person on the team, whether they were first or last. So I want to thank the committee. I want to thank all my fellow athletes um, for this nomination. It's so special, and I feel so proud to be part of all of Reims. Thank you. Okay, next presenter is Mike Darling. Is this how it is, Neil? Cool. Now we look like we have a full head of hair because I got a pair of glasses on my head. Even though, even though you didn't use it once in your speech, but you had to have it on your head so we didn't focus on your bald head, right? I'm bald and proud, pal. I'll use my glasses. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, it's, it's great to be here tonight. It's like my second family reunion seeing all my kids. I call them my kids. Um, Becoming, God, 30 years old, having kids of their own and their own lives, and it's very rewarding to know this. But I am standing here today because I have the great pleasure of introducing Laura Weeks Booker. She's also known as the Flying Shrimp. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Laura came to us freshman year, she was about five foot three in heels, and she wanted to attack the high jump. And I'm like, you know, kid, the high jump's a tough sport to do. You know, we really don't have many, much practice space, but we allowed her to do it. And only with a four step, she was clearing four foot four. I called myself a genius. I told Joanne Faust who we have, and Joanne would mentor her for the next four years. Laura Weeks is the greatest high jumper in all of Reims history, bar none. Now, is she the highest high jumper of all time? No. She has the indoor record at 5'6". A great athlete named Rachel Jackson has the record at 5'7". But nobody dominated the Hawk and Mock League in such a hard event than Laura Weeks Booker. She was a four-year participant in both indoor and outdoor, captain of field events. Um, she was constantly in state competition her entire career. She received her first state title her sophomore year, along with fellow teammates Jasmine Fitzgerald and fellow Hall of Fame inductee Michelle Soroy when they won the Massachusetts State Pentathlon Championship. Laura Weeks was the rare athlete that continued to improve each year. Her consistency and attention to form is what set her apart from other jumpers. But it was her toughness, both mentally and physically, that set her apart from other competitors. During an indoor meet her senior year versus North Attleboro, Laura was running the 55-meter hurdles for us. And the last hurdle, she clipped and fell. And she fell hard. But she got up and finished, enough to get a second place. Before heading to the hospital to check out her wrist, she went over to the high jump and she scissor kicked the bar to ensure first place and to give us the four points to win the meet. She then went to the hospital and later found out that she had fractured her wrist. That's how tough a competitor this girl was. Um, and her mother was upset because it was before their big cruise um, for the holiday break. And, you know, we all felt bad for Laura as she was being yelled at as she was leaving the freshman field. But anyways, uh, uh, wearing a cast her senior year, um, this would be a psychological detriment to most athletes her age. Um, as far as confidence to continue to perform at such an elite level like she was. But Laura remained determined, and as a result, she wore that cast and she'll have a season of a lifetime, which was her senior year indoor 2009. During this time, she won the Massachusetts State Class C Indoor High Jump Championship, and then proceeded to win the Massachusetts All-State Championship with what is still an OA Indoor School Record Leap of five foot six inches. Then in the spring of 2009, she along with teammates Mariana Sequeira and Hall of Fame inductee Taylor Horn will win the Massachusetts State Class C Outdoor High Jump Relay title. She is the holder of an incredible undefeated streak in the high jump 
which is one of the most difficult in track. Laura was not defeated by anyone in the Hockenmark League from her sophomore year through her senior year in both indoor and outdoor track. In basketball terms, that means she went 48-0 and in the regular season, won six Hockenmark League championships, three indoor and three outdoor. Laura was also an outstanding hurdler, consistently scoring in that event during her four years with the team. Laura is a holder of one individual and two team school records. She holds the indoor record at five feet six inches, and like I said, she was one inch shy from taking the outdoor record from Rachel Jackson. Laura's talent and achievements in her senior year did not go unnoticed when she won the Sue Rivard Award for the best female athlete of all rings high school, which was tough to do with that class of 2009 because it was loaded with athletes. Laura has been a multi Hockamock League champion, state class champion, all state champion, Hockamock League all star, Boston Globe all scholastic, Boston Herald all scholastic, and Enterprise News all scholastic. She was also an outstanding soccer player, playing defense and part of the Division II 2008 state championship team. Upon graduation, Laura went to Bridgewater State University and achieved a BA in chemistry, and is currently a science teacher at Whitman Hanson High School. She is married to her husband, Bill Booker, and they have two young boys, four-year-old Warren and two-and-a-half-year-old Wade. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed honor and privilege to induct Laura Weeks Booker to the All-Rings Hall of Fame. Well, I'd like to start off by saying thank you, Cart Darling. That was a hell of an introduction. I'm not sure how I'm going to top that. Um, also, thank you to the induction committee for this amazing honor. And to congratulations to all my fellow inductees. Um, I know I would not be here tonight without some of my fellow track members. It was quite the time that we had on that team, but we made the best of it. Um, it's truly an honor to be here tonight. It means so much to me becoming part of the All of Rames High School Athletic Hall of Fame. My time spent as an athlete in the good old days, as I like to tell my students, are some of the fondest memories that to this day still bring a smile to my face and I'll tell anyone willing or not willing about. When I found out I was being in inducted, I thought, holy crap, I have to give a speech. <laughs> and then I had some time to think. Then I started writing my speech yesterday while my students took a test. And I thought, well, you know what? I get to write a speech and talk about some of the greatest times that I had to this day then they have no choice but to sit here and listen to me. <laughs> so, as the days go by, I'm in year nine of teaching now, and my students ask me what sports I play. And I say, well, you know, for soccer, I've played since I can remember. I pretty much came out of the womb playing soccer. My whole family played. When it comes to track, it was a little different. I knew I wanted to do winter track because my siblings did winter track, and everyone else in my family wanted to do, to do tennis. That quickly changed, <laughs> sorry, Dad, because after my winter track season, I just knew track was for me. How did I start high jump, though? That's what everyone always asks me. And it brings me back to this cold, rainy day in my freshman year where we got to practice and Coach Sunday comes in and we had two options. We had the dreaded stop sign run or we got to try out field events and hurdles. That was a no brainer for me. In my mind, worst case scenario, I'm horrible at high jump and hurdles. And I can say, well, at least I tried, but I missed a day of running, which ironically, as a member of the trap team, I hated running. <laughs> Hence, high jump and hurdles. Best case scenario, I end up being halfway decent and possibly could do a dodge a few more stop sign runs. Either way, I did not have to run to that stop sign in the rain that day. Little did I know where that would take me and how much I would fall in love with that event. Being a member of track and soccer helped me grow and find myself the friendships I made throughout my athletic career and memories I made were priceless. From bus rides to late night suicides, to pasta dinners and winning state's junior year for soccer. And even though those long Reggie Lewis days were so grueling looking back, they were some of the best days ever. And I can't imagine what life would have been like without sports. It's because of soccer and track that I tell my students to this day, I would go back to high school in a heartbeat just for sports. All of my accomplishments would not have been made possible without my amazing coaches. Britt, Tony, and Cersei for soccer, thank you for being the best soccer coaches I ever had and pushing me to be the best and giving me time to grow. Although I will definitely not miss Britt's world famous, get on the goal line and touch them all until I say stop. <laughs> Darling and Sunday, thank you for always pushing me to my limits because you knew I could do it no matter how much of a pain in the butt I was. And trust me, 
I was always the first person to complain no matter what we were doing, unless it was high jump or hurdles. Mm -hmm. Pamela, thank you for always making sure that we had fun but got it done. And I'm still sorry about that time that I jumped on the bed of nails my freshman year in physics class. <laughs> Miss A, my old hurdles coach to most, maybe Miss St. Mary, thank you for having the patience to teach me hurdles and for always being up for a side-by-side -side race. And last, but certainly last, not least, Mrs. Faust, thank you for passing on your love of high jump to me and helping me master the dorky cheerleader move. I wouldn't be here without it. <laughs> thank you for always making me try just one more time and make me with the bar up just one more inch to push myself. Having the most supportive and dedicated coaches wasn't enough. Not one thing would have gotten me here today without my family. Thank you to my husband who didn't know me back then but still humors me with listening to my stories about my, my different events and watching the high jump video over and over Mr. Benny got for me on, on a record from that dreaded day that I was not looking forward to with my cast but it turned out being amazing. <laughs> Thank you to my siblings, Megan, Jeff, and Kayla, who supported me from afar while they were off from college and always made sure to congratulate me after every meet, no matter what they were doing and where they were. And most importantly, thank you to my parents for always pushing me and supporting me unconditionally. Dad, thank you for always filming every single meet and watching it over and over and over, trying to figure out why that bar fell down. <laughs> and Mom, thank you for never missing a single soccer game or track meet. Thank you for hosting the most epic pasta dinners for soccer that everyone looked forward to. And to this day, I will never forget the moment that I set that PR that Coach Darling told you about, and I immediately jumped off the, rack, the track. While there was a race going on, didn't think twice, and sprinted off that Reggie Lewis center track and jumped right into my mom's arms to celebrate. You have always been my biggest cheerleader and were there for me at all my every up and down and everything in between. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you made to give us the life we have and everything and never let us settle, even if it cost me a trip to Spain. <laughs> Being an athlete has taught me the most patience, resilience, and dedication and grace. All the people that I have had the privilege of competing with and against, all the coaches and teachers who have supported me and those who have lifted me up and who I have to thank for this honor. Thank you does not seem like enough for where I am today but I want you to know that I will forever be grateful and that this award goes out to all of you. So thank you again, and I cannot even begin to say enough about how you are the ones that got me here today. Thank you. I'd like to introduce the next presenter. Kyle Souza, OA Cross Country and Track Coach. Integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance. That's where we begin. Because that's where it began for generations of all the Rams athletes who had the tremendous good fortune to cross paths with Neil Levine and Judy Copley. <laughs> Integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance is where it began the day that I first met Neil and Judy. I was 21 years old looking forward to my first coaching opportunity. 20 minutes uh, after having met them, we had spent an awful lot of time talking about those five things. I think Neil had quoted Aristotle about six or seven times. <laughs> and we had talked surprisingly little about the sport of cross country. At the time, I thought it was strange, but there was something that Neil and Judy wanted me to know from the start. That it was never about wins or records or championships. That it was about transforming young people's lives. We had a lot of wins, records, and championships. I think the final count was 192 and 16, something like that. <laughs> Some tremendous athletes, including a few that you've heard from tonight, Mike and Jenna. And we also had our Dennis Harkins and our Richie Wirtz and our Sarah Daly and Casey Keene. Athletes who didn't win a championship or break a record, but people who Neil and Judy invested in no less. Even now, 10 to 15 years later, they can see those faces still. 
They're among hundreds of OA cross-country kids who battled out on the course, battled through rough days, maybe through bad races or setbacks or injuries, battled their way through life, through personal struggles, personal fears, some of which we may still not know about. Neil and Judy didn't just build a program. They built Safe Haven, a place where you could come, take risks, be challenged, succeed, fail, get back up, and be better than yesterday. Integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance were not the keys to success. They were the definition of success. And all the wins, championships, and records were byproducts. Happy byproducts, but byproducts no less. It was my honor to have coached alongside them for so long, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce them and congratulate them tonight for their service to the young men and women of all of Rames Cross Country. I present to you for induction to the All of Rames Athletic Hall of Fame, Judy Copley and Neil Levine. Just so many stories we could tell. That's for sure. Hey, do you remember that time we set court, set the course on fire, literally and figuratively, at the state championship meet in Gardner? That was epic. <laughs> so, it's a good story. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Wait. So there's, I don't know, 351 cities and towns in the state of Massachusetts, and every year 20 of them get to qualify for the state championship meet. I think we qualified almost every year. We, I don't remember. We were there all the time. So <laughs> this one particular year, we, are, we qualified for the state meet, 20 teams, and it was back in the days when people read newspapers, and it was out in Gardner, Massachusetts. And when we had these big state meets, Mr. Paul was gracious enough to allow us to go out to Gardner the day before and preview the course. So all the teams, all the big teams in the state were out at Gardner. It was on a golf course, a country club. So we're out there previewing the course. So again, there are 20 teams that qualify for the meet. And this year, we got in the Boston Globe would do a poll. And OA was ranked like 20th, both boys and girls, out of the 20 teams. And the Boston Herald had a poll, and we were ranked like 19 out of 20 teams. And the Massachusetts State Coaches Association had a poll, and they said we were 19 out of 20 teams. And every poll that you read, all, all the prognosticators, all the experts said we were probably going to finish last in the meet. So we wanted a little plan to get the troops rallied up. Feel free to interject. Wait. <laughs> Polls mean nothing. That's all we. That's yeah. so. We're getting. We had the idea <laughs> before we boarded the bus to go out to Gardner that we'd just do a little incentive. You know, just get the kids, the kids up. Get, get the kids riled up. up you know? Get them fired up. Get them fired up. Exactly. Certainly. Literally. <laughs> Got to get them fired up because to hell with the pulse, right? right? So, brought the can from home. Sorry, Neil. It's okay. So we take we take the this is like a little garbage can. We take we go out to the seventh fairway, out of the Gardner Municipal Golf Course Country Club, and there's teams like all uh, around us. Previewing like, you know, the course. Previewing the, the course, doing the little warmers, running around, and we get the top you know the, all the top That's kids, the boys and girls around. over here. Come on, this for a second. <laughs> People remember this. Yeah. Some of you have seen that before. Uh, so we get the kid, we get the kids circled up, 
and we're giving them like the pre-race, you know, we're gonna get these kids riled up. So, we hold up. The Boston, Boston Globe. Globe. The Boston Globe, hold this So, you know, Brockton Enterprise has us, you know, ranked 20th. So we take the thing from the Brockton Enterprise. Scrap it up. It up. It up. So. That's what we think of the Brockton Enterprise. <laughs> Boston Globe has us at 19. We crumple it up. That's what we think of the Boston Globe. Same thing with the Herald. The Herald has a play. <laughs> That's what we think of the Herald. We take the lighter fluid, pull the lighter fluid into the bucket, take the matches, strike the matches, boom. Big bonfire goes. The Ooh. kids are like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. Like, all the other kids are looking at us like, we're crazy. Like, what is going on here? Fire goes out. We send the kids back on the bus, back to the hotel room. Judy and I, you know, pick up the bucket. And the whole fairway is like fried. There's no grass left. The golf course is trashed. The kids are gone, we're gone. We just kind of look at each other. We get back on the bus. Go back to the hotel. We come back the next day, bring the kids back to the burn mark, get them all fired up again. We had everyone touching their hand on the yeah, burn mark. Awesome. Kids are pumped. They run out of their spikes that day. We end up finishing, boys and girls that finished like third place from like 19th. It was like PRs all everywhere. That was a day burning up the course. We, we literally spent hours this week trying to figure out, weed out what stories to tell, and then we just realized there was no way we could even begin to touch the tip of the iceberg. So we can't tell them all. So what are we going to talk about? Well, we'll talk. No, this, we're getting serious now. <laughs> we're going to talk about how humbled we are to receive this honor. What else are we going to talk about? We can talk about how thankful we are to all the people who've made the success of all of our aims, high cross country, past, present, and future possible. That sounds good to me. I think I'll start. First, I want to say thank you to my mom sitting over at that table. She is going to be 89 on Monday. She'll tell you that she is the reason that I'm so shy. <laughs> More importantly, sorry mom, I want to say thank you to my wife of Wendy, the wonderful Wendy for 32 years. Coaching was a, uh -oh. coaching was a, like a second job for us. And for 15 years, we sacrificed a lot of time together for the success of the program. Thank you for letting me pursue my passion. Love you. several people I'd like to thank. One can't be here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, COVID struck her house this morning, but um, if it wasn't for my friend Karen Bowen, I wouldn't be here tonight. In August of 1999, I just switched jobs and commenced working from home. I was leading the pack on that one. Uh, <laughs> to be home more with our boys. And just like two weeks into my new routine, Karen called and informed me that Oliver Ames was looking for an assistant cross-country coach, and she encouraged me to pursue that. Five days later, I was, felt I was at my first cross-country practice. So, so much for being home well with the boys. Um, and then, although I tend to be associated with cross-country, right after that first uh, cross-country season ended, I became an assistant track coach uh, for Mike Darling. And for the next three and five years, I was the distance coach for the indoor and outdoor teams. And after that, there were a couple seasons when both Neil and I were volunteer outdoor coaches. And for years, we served as timers at the meets. Um, so I started out a trackie um, in my life and competition. So the opportunity to be part of those teams and work with so many great kids and all the coaches here tonight who I got to work with those years, it was just tremendous. So thanks for that, Mike. I really appreciate it. And as it turned out, I did get to see my kids more because they often attended practices when they were young. And then once in high school, Mackenzie competed in track. 
um, both indoor and outdoor, and Britain ran all three seasons throughout high school. Um, and I just love that we got to spend that time together and share that common interest. Uh, but I have to admit, it did get trying at times when they were young. Um, there was one particular Nantucket trip that Mackenzie attended with the cross country team when he was about 10. And at the end of the day, when we were all in town, he ran up to me all excited and asked if he could get the same t-shirt that several of the older boys on the team had bought. So I'm thinking, sure, now let's go over to the store. Turns out it was the shirt proclaiming, I am the man from Nantucket. <laughs> so, he didn't get the shirt. <laughs> And it's truly amazing that our youngest son, Britton, survived because at various times, he was literally tied up, duct taped to a backstop, tossed around like a football. Joanne Faust reminded me tonight the time that he got shoved into a trash can. And then Jake Sunderland reminded me that Britain accompanied me to a pasta dinner at the Badalaro's house one time. And I was driving home about an hour or so later, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot Britain. I left him at the Badalaro's house. So, but probably the most memorable incident with Britain had to be the time that he was coaxed into calling 911 from the payphone outside Jim Mitchell, the athletic director's office. And he summoned the police, the fire department, and an ambulance to the high school. So, anyway. And then, of course, my husband, Chris, who had to put up with all these years, but I know there were a lot of Saturdays when I was either at practice or away at meets. And given your love and admiration for pristine lawns, I know how difficult it was for you to have our lawn trampled by like 100 plus kids and their yoga mats so many Saturdays each fall. It was... So thank you for putting up with me and for understanding my love for the sport, the kids, and what we're all about. So thank you for that. We'd also like to thank Kyle for that beautiful introduction. Thanks, Kyle. And the rest of the current coaching staff at the high school, Allison, Troy, and the recently sabbatical Helen Monreal. We truly... <laughs> we truly left the program in a better place when we put it in your hands. Okay, they're gonna get sick of hearing this. The value of, values of it. Ready, everyone? Integrity, commitment, hard work, sacrifice, and perseverance, as well as the tradition, as well as tradition live on. You see, uh, tradition does not graduate, and tradition does not retire. It lives on in each and every one of you. Um. This past summer, Oliver Ames Cross Country lost a, a truly great friend and mentor, Mr. Ed Connor. And like us, Ed loved running and coaching. And for years, he came to practice every single day. He served as a timer at home meets, and he often attended indoor and outdoor track meets. We just want to say we miss you, Ed, and we wish you were here with us tonight. In addition to Ed standing alongside us for every stride, we have tremendous support from a couple of volunteer assistant coaches, Chris Gammons and Marty Weiner. And we'd like to thank the presidents of the Boosters organization during, who are there during our tenure, George and Ronnie Harrington, Craig and, Craig and Ann Binney. Jim and Diane Kent, and Craig and Michelle Sarney. Over the past 30 years, you have provided 17 of your children as student athletes, captains, and even one coach to the team. But more importantly, you have provided the moral, physical, and financial support that has made the All of Rams High School Cross Country Program what it is. This Hall of Fame induction belongs to all of you. 
family, coaches, volunteers, boosters, and the student athletes of all of Rames High School. To Gary Bourne and the entire Hall of Fame committee, and all of you here. It is it's an honor, honor and, and a privilege, privilege to, to be inducted into, into the All of Rames High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. <laughs> former OA teacher at Easton Historian. And a former Randolph teacher, and on behalf of all the teachers in your past, Mr. Levine, we want to say how very pleased we are uh, at your induction to us. Well, shocked might be a better word, but... <laughs> But here we are. <laughs> so, uh, following in the wake of all these wonderful presenters who are athletes and coaches, I, I think I need to establish my, my baseline. Uh, four years, all of Rames golf team, one varsity match, one loss. <laughs> I did better as a historian, I guess. Uh, and I'm here to present uh, somebody who is uh, no longer with us, someone who passed away in 1961. Uh, and that was uh, Jack Mason. Um, Jack Mason was a baseball star at OA more than a century ago, and he was the man who restored Oliver Ames athletics in the 1930s and 1940s. Today, he's only remember, remembered accurately, it seems, as a grouchy curmudgeon who tossed little boys out of Frothingham Park in the last years before he died in 1961. Those little boys are now grouchy conventions on their own. <laughs> so uh, uh, I never met Jack, but uh, he was the first head of the history department. We've only had a few, um, two of us are here tonight. Uh, and so uh, as one of his curmudgeonly successors in that job, I feel a special connection to him. This is his story. John Carlton Mason was born in September 1897 to Scottish immigrant parents. Uh, legendary coach and OA Hall of Famer Harry Pratt saw something in the five foot six inch freshman and Mason was quickly promoted to the varsity basketball, uh, baseball squad. He did play basketball at five six. Uh, the highlight of his uh, first two seasons uh, as a pitcher was a game against Bridgewater where he pitched a two hit shutout, struck out ten and walked no one. The best preserved records come from his 1915 season. 1915. Uh, Mason pitched perhaps the greatest game of his career when he struck out 21 batters in a 12-inning game without walking anyone. In his next game, just two days later, uh, another complete game, he again gave up no walks while striking out 12. The strikeout parade continued uh, with games of 10, 11, 16, and 12 strikeouts. The Brockton Times uh, reported Carlton Mason of Northeastern has established a record which is far ahead of the average school pitcher of the, this vicinity and which stamps, stamps him as one of the best. Mason completed the season with a 10 and two record, 127 strikeouts against only seven walks uh, in just 107 innings. He and his catcher were named uh, to the Brockton Times Nine, a precursor, precursor of the Enterprise All-Scholastic team. And when OA won the Triangle League title in that year, Mason got the trophy as MVP. In his senior year, Mason bettered his one loss record to complete uh, what could have been considered, uh, if we only had all the records, a uh, Hall of Fame worthy career as an athlete. After uh, OA, uh, Mason went to college and became a teacher. In 1930, Mary Frothingham, Hall of Famer Mary Frothingham, who uh, entered in the same category a few years ago, the citizens category that Jack is coming in under tonight, uh, appointed him as the first uh, uh, director of Frothingham Park, the very brand new state-of-the-art Frothingham Park. And in 1935, he joined the teaching staff at OA. 
as a history teacher, Mason arrived at the low point of the OA sports program. The school, which was one of the smallest in the area, was not fielding competitive teams in an era when uh, gate receipts were the main source of sports funding. The single phys ed, boys phys ed teacher coached all the boys sports. All OA sports had going for it was Frothingham Park, a state-of-the-art facility. By all reports, Mason ran a varied program at Frothingham with plenty of free play, but also a variety of summer tournaments and various sports. By the mid-1940s, many boys and girls who had grown up around Frothingham Park and its intramural programs were starring in Mason's revitalized OA sports program. In 1935, sports uh, park director and new teacher Mason lobbied the school committee to hire three coaches, not phys ed teachers, but coaches, and that was a first at, at Oliver Ames. While not a coaching innovator like Val, Val Moscato, Mason proved, in the words of Hall of Famer Dick Kent, to be a pretty good coach. Um, he, uh, Kent said that although he wasn't a professional coach, he was good enough because he had good athletic background and devoted his time to the kids. He was also ready to fill in when another coach couldn't be found. In his very first fill-in job, uh, he coached the 1935-36 uh, basketball team, uh, which became the first OA team to win a Hockamock League champions. By the time he got through coaching basketball, he had achieved uh, a 750 uh, winning percentage, which was pretty good. Uh, being the park director also gave Coach Mason the opportunity to develop new programs in tennis and track. He loved baseball and um, continued as a baseball coach for a few years. And between 1948 and 1950, he won three consecutive Hockamont League champions with his, with his team, which included several Hall of Famers. Even the football team in 1945, well, let me back up for a second. In 1936, Mason's football team finished with a typical record of one, six, and one. Uh, but according to town reports, beginning in that year, he was so popular as a coach that more boys began to come out for the sport, which reduced the competitive disadvantage that we had and ultimately led to building a successful program under uh, coaches later in the 40s. And in 1945, that did bear fruit. Uh, Mason's basketball team went 12-2, uh, uh, and two, while the girls' teams were undefeated, and even the football team had its first undefeated season, sort of, at four wins and four ties. In 46, Jack Mason became the town's first athletic director with responsibility for scheduling, financial management, and hiring recommendations. His first recommendation was to hire football coach Ed Swenson, who went on from all of Rames to become a legendary college football coach at Bridgewater State. In 1947, Mason added softball as a girls' sport and brought in future Hall of Famer Betty Barrows as coach for all three girls' sports. Mason would continue to lobby for additional girls' coaches for many years, although Betty Barrows did really well on her own. Uh, other good hires included Bill Valenti and two guys named Moscato and Nixon who came in through another Mason innovation, paid assistant coaches. The synergy with the job as park director allowed A.D. Mason to build the infrastructure for a successful program, the program that um, developed into the golden age of the 1950s and 1960s and continues on to the present day. Probably his biggest achievement came in 1948 when he finally convinced the school committee to use tax money to help pay for the sports program. No more um, gate receipts and student athletic fees, at least for a long, long time. Jack Mason was also active in the community, a founding member and president of the Lions Club, manager of Frothingham Hall when it hosted over 300 events a year, and president of the Easton Teachers Club, precursor of today's Teachers Association. He was George Bailey, and like Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life, maybe by the late 1950s he had a right to be tired and grumpy. But tonight, thanks to a Hall of Fame committee willing to look at all the evidence Jack Mason is where he belongs in always Hall of Fame. And it's a great honor. I would like to uh, introduce Hazel Varela to accept 
uh, the award for uh, Jack Mason. It's a distinct honor to recommend and hopefully accept this nomination. Jack Mason was my history teacher, but Jack Mason, as it has indicated, was also the athletic director, the faculty manager. And so when I was in high school, which was a little long ago, <laughs> I would sell the tickets for the basketball game at night. And Jack Mason's daughter and I were very good friends. And so when he was going to check an opposite team, she would go and I would go also. So we really got to know the Masons and particularly their extraordinary commitment to Easton, Olive Rames, Frothingham Memorial Park, which he was in charge of, and OA. All of Rames was so important to him. When he died in June of 1961, the question was, obviously, who would replace him? At this point, that's not the concern here. What was the concern was, how do we honor him? How do we not forget him? And so, soon after 1961, it was decided that the top male athlete at OA, who was always recognized on class night, it's always been done, probably always will be done. In fact, I think we probably have a couple of people in this room who've had that honor, that that would be called the Jack Mason Award, the top male athlete of the year at class night, which is obviously in June, would receive the Jack, the John C. Mason honor. And so I'm proud to mention it. And again, we have people who have received it. Thank you. presenter, everybody knows, and I'll tell you, uh, it's been quite an honor to, as part of the Hall of Fame committee, to sit <clears throat> in the same room as Lainey. Uh, this particular honor for her, well, she's presenting, but she coached the team, uh, is, was something where I was a big part of watching uh, as my niece, Jacqueline Bliss, played on the team. So I, I really paid attention to this team uh, and watched them progress and watched the coaching. Uh, but Lainey, uh, it's been quite an honor to sit in the same room as you, as I say, and, and can call you my friend. You are uh, well known in Easton, Massachusetts, New England, and nationally. And it's such an honor to have you on the committee. So come on up here and get going with your team. Go. <laughs> Pretty funny, Stevie. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is with great pride that I stand before you tonight to welcome this group of young women into the OA Athletic Hall of Fame as state champions. As you read the team bio in the booklet tonight, you see so many details as to how the season went. Critical games and critical moments and the consistent giving of whatever it, whatever it took to win. Losing the first game of the season to Foxborough and then going on a 25-0 run to finish the job was awe-inspiring. What did we say, Kel? Lose the first, win the last. And that became our motto. These players are among the very best to have ever worn the All Braves uniform. Led by senior captains Lauren Batista and Lauren Vadalaro, along with seniors Jackie Bliss, Tessa the Contessa Dern, <laughs> Sarah Hurley, and Taylor Horn, this gifted group formed a bond that would demonstrate each and every day what it meant to be a Lady Tiger. They were hardworking, selfless, and for the good of the group. With, I will say, a bunch of shenanigans that kept it fun when we needed it. Junior Nicole Bostick was the best sixth player in the history of the program. Junior Jossie Paul, sophomores Jen Byron, Lindsay McNeese, Emily Romans, and Candace Stedman brought high basketball IQs and both physical and mental toughness every time we hit the floor. We even made it into the ESPN magazine. <laughs> I could go on and on about all the game details, but to me, these players' greatness was measured by the people that they have become. As a result of the time that we all spent together and what we have accomplished together. My coaching staff, Kelly Hurley, Kate Hart Raby, and Kristen Scali Morani, brought their own special skills to the table. Each one of them played basketball in high school, and three of us played in college. I wore a dress, I mean, so it wasn't pretty. But... <laughs> That's life in those days. But to me, what is what made the, them the dream team was just the way they were. Each one of us, although in different decades, all brought the fervor of what it meant to be a female athlete. Their gifts, coupled with this incredible group, makes this a season to remember forever. As a coach, I preach to my players four important principles. Be prepared, make your minutes matter, for the good of the group, and pay it forward. This group got a real taste of that as eighth graders. I have pictures of them sitting behind the scorer's table at the Boston Garden with their travel team championship t-shirts on and their medals, watching the 2006 OA girls basketball team spike for the state championship. They learned those lessons well. And they did exactly the same thing for the next generation of champions. I give them a lot of credit based on the fact that we won the state championship again in 2022. And the fact that each and every group understood the concept of pay it forward. One of the traditions that I really believe in is the trophy walk. And for each of the three state championships, the team and myself and my coaching staff took the trophy to every single school in town, all the elementary schools, the middle school, and to see those children in the hall asking my players for autographs, <laughs> wanting them to stop and talk to them because those girls followed us and it was that whole mindset of pay it forward and for the good of the group. I actually had one boy, Dr. Cabral will appreciate this, this year when we did it, um, he said, hey coach, will you give me your autograph? And he handed me a sharpie and he wanted me to write on his forehead. And I thought to myself, uh, the principal is probably going to call and that's not going to work out so good. But just the idea that they were so willing to pay it forward. And that to me is probably one of the best parts of all of that. And as I mentioned, to me the most important thing from all of this is the fact that they're just not champions on the court. They have become champions in life and I could not be more proud of them. One, one funny story, when, when you win the state championship in Easton, the police department gives you a police escort. So they meet you like at the town line, and you know, they wait, the bus pulls over, and then the police pull ahead of you. And so we go through downtown Easton, which of course, if you blink, it's not really that old in its trip. <laughs> so, so there's all these families and parents and stuff, and we're going down Main Street, and so along, the sidewalk along the left, 
across from where the farmer's daughter is now are all, you know, the fans, the parents and stuff, and they're all like, woo you know, we won the state championship, waving and stuff, and the kids were like, off the wall. Windows were open, they're screaming their brains out, having a ball. And then for some reason, I don't remember why, the bus turned around. And my kids didn't realize what happened. They said, Coach, did you see how many people were in downtown Northeastern cheering us on? And I said, yeah, but they never realized that it was the same group of people that were on this side of the street went over to the other side of the street when the bus turned around. I know this is probably the first time they knew that, so I'm telling you now, that's, it seemed like it was an awful lot of people, but it, you know, it was just, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> I do want to say to you all, I have a surprise for you tonight. Um, I have saved your game jerseys, and I will be presenting them to you tonight. Um, I've saved them for 12 years. Uh, they smell really bad, so I watch them a few times. Um, you know, because 12 years of sitting and whatever. Um, but I just want you to know I could not wait to give them to you, so I'm so excited as to how many of you are actually here tonight. It is an honor to present to you the 2010 Division II Girls Basketball State Champions for induction into the All Rings Athletic Hall of Fame. Come on up, girlfriends. Come on up, coaches. Let's finish this thing with our bangers. people that night that we won on Main Street. I'm convinced it wasn't just one side. <laughs> oh good, I'm so glad you guys are all there. All right, well, so everyone already knows Lauren at this point. I don't think I need to introduce her. Um, but I'm the other Lauren, and I was lucky enough to be co-captain alongside LB during the 2009-2010 season. Almost around 13 years ago now, we were actually in this room celebrating after we won the state championship. It's so great to be back here tonight celebrating with all of you guys and to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, it's an honor to accept this induction into the Olive Rames High School Athletics Hall of Fame. Um, there are a lot of people that we'd like to thank tonight on behalf of our team. First of all, thank you to the Hall of Fame committee for selecting our team for this great honor and for hosting us at such a wonderful event. Um, we are so grateful that you gave us all the re a reason to come together. Thank you to all of our incredible families who have been our most supportive and loyal fans from the very beginning. A special shout out to my mom and dad. Um, there was never a game they missed and my mom always managed to be somewhere with a camera, even when we were at the garden. Somehow she made it to the floor. Yeah. She had a badge. Don't know how she got that badge, but she made it there. Um, we are just so thankful for each and every one of our families. Um, some of our fondest memories are from many pasta dinners, which we all seem to have in common. Um, Post-championship celebrations, team dinners at the town spa, and McGuire's. Um, that you all made happen for us. We are so grateful for all of your love and support. Your turn. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you to all of our teammates, those who are here tonight and those who couldn't make it, for trusting Warren and I to be your captains, for buying into the dream and the vision to be state champions, and for embracing your role and doing it to the best of your ability every single day. We know it wasn't always easy, I think we all can remember our early morning summer evolution workouts in the steaming hot OA gym, 16 and ones. Should we do one no, right now? We shouldn't. But as, as we can see from right now, it was most definitely worth it. A special shout out to the other members of the class of 2010, Jacqueline Bliss, Sarah Hurley, Tessa Dern, and Taylor Horn. As Lainey had just said, as eighth graders on that dynamic travel basketball team, we sat in the stands at both the Garden and the DCU Center as we watched the 2006 team win their state championship with our own medals around our neck, which I have right here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is from, it says, 8th grade girls champs <laughs> from the Metro S championship that we had just won. 
It was at that moment that the dream began, and there was never a doubt that we w would not make it happen. But, you know, that Foxborough game, maybe some doubts, uh, you know, going down in that first game of the season was not the plan. Uh, but from that moment, it was definitely a blessing in disguise, uh, because that's where the motto, lose the first, win the last, was born. Um, I can vividly remember practice the next day. Um, it stands out as one of the most competitive and focused groups of people um, with, with a, a goal in mind and, and a relentless pursuit of, of that. Um, and that was kind of the mentality we took with us for the next 25 games uh, to win that state championship. Thank you to our assistant coaches, Kelly Hurley, Kristen Marani, and Kate Hart Raby. Speaking from a, a coach's voice now, as a current coach, I know the sacrifices you all make to ensure that we were prepared every time we stepped on the court and what goes on behind the scenes uh, to create a championship team. Did we forget anybody? Anyone? Anyone important? <laughs> Lainey? Oh. oh, yeah, Lainey. <laughs> a simple thank you is not nearly enough to express our appreciation and gratitude for all that you did and continue to do for us. You made sure that we always stayed humble enjoyed the journey and not just the destination, and never took for granted the incredible privilege it is to wear the Tiger uniform. You also taught us that bribery might be the strongest and most effective <laughs> coaching tool. <laughs> Fun Fetty cupcakes if we keep a team under 30 points and have less than 10 turnovers, was it? <laughs> you knew what made us tick, that's for sure. Lots of cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Winning the state championship Oh my God, would you move it up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. I, just, I wore my heels today, too. Uh, winning the state championship will forever be a favorite memory for all of us, but I don't think we realized just at the time how special all the other little moments were. When you're 16, 17, or 18 years old, you don't necessarily see the big picture. But looking back now, we couldn't be happier with all of our memories we made and all the life lessons we learned along the way. Coach, you taught us the importance of we before me and the amazing things you can do and accomplish when you always put the team first. You taught us to be leaders, to win with class, lose with grace, and to never forget to have fun. We are also grateful for your mentorship on and off the court. And we are so glad that we were able to add to your incredible legacy and the tradition of the OA girls basketball. Congratulations to all the other inductees today, and enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs> <laughs>
Unfortunately, we had a little mix-up with the photographer this evening. Apparently, she was in a car accident on the way here. So, if anyone can take pictures with their camera, please feel free to do so. And if you could get them to me or Carrie or any committee member, we'd really appreciate it tonight. Thank you.